Hello dear viewer, Mana Mana Murdoch X here, and today we're gonna go through an old issue of PSM PlayStation 100% independent PlayStation 2 magazine. Uh, this is issue number 81 from February 2004, which features Resident Evil Outbreak, Volume 8. So, this is one of those uh, ones that has those flaps on the front. Those are always kind of fun. It's got like a perforation mark to tear it off. I'm glad that the person that originally owned this, because this isn't originally mine, I got this off of eBay some years ago, but uh, I'm glad they kept that intact. There's also the mailers that are in here too. I took a brief flip through here, but not much. All right, so let's do this. So add for this game, what is that, Lowrider? I have never played that one, I don't own that one. Uh, let's see, in this issue, Star Wars Battlefront, that's a good one. Socom 2 gameplay in a Star Wars game, yes. Maximo Army of Zen reviewed, one of PS2's best ever action games. Cool, one of the 007 games, there's many of them. Uh, all the ones I've tried are good. First review, Sonic Heroes, if I recall correctly, that one's not good. Um, but I don't know. I don't think I've played that one. I think I, I think I own that one. Hands on Resident Evil Outbreak. Finally, we spill every gory detail inside. 2003 Game of the Year. No way you'll guess what it is. Oh, I thought Resident Evil was the Game of the Year, but no, I guess I won't guess what it is. Uh, 2003. I don't, I don't know what 2003 was off the top of my head. What the games were. All right, what do we got here? Ratchet and Clank. Going Commando. They sure love their penis names. Eeny, meeny, miny, boom. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Ratchet and Clank games are fantastic, but not a big fan of their naming system. Red T for mild violence. Looks like a list of uh, gadgets. That's cool. Heli. Heli? What does that say? Patch? Perch? Pack? Oh, Heli Pack. Heli Pack. Well, that's fun. All right, now for the staff. These are always interesting. This guy's still in a uh, media. I think he, I can't remember who he works for, but I remember looking him up uh, a couple of years ago or a year ago. And Bill Donahue, that guy always cracked me up because he puts on the ape suit for the thing at the end of the magazine. Interesting folks, interesting folks. We're gonna read about him, let's see. I've never been so glad to see a zombie horde. Talking about Resident Evil, well that's fun. Chris Slate, editor-in-chief, likes uh, adventure games, platformers, arcade racers, hobbies, comics, hoops, DVDs, movies, anime, drawing, iPod. Mm, I think DVDs and movies might be kind of the same, but but I like where you're coming from, Chris Slate. What do you hate most about zombies? They're really bad about returning things after they've borrowed them. I'll probably never get my brain back. <laughs> I get it. Uh, meet the team. Yeah, I'm gonna skip that part. On the cover, we got Resident Evil Outbreak. Snossages, snossages, snossages. All right, Manhunt, that's another game. I'm pretty sure I own this, but I don't remember what it's like. Oh, it's a Rockstar game, I forgot about that. The most important video game of the last five years, according to the Chicago Tribune. All right, uh, the main menu. Rawr, lying scum. That facial cream wasn't hypoallergenic. Moisturizer, I need moisturizer now. That's fun. That's what that's what I liked about this, this magazine, was all the silly little things they'd throw in there. Great for great for teenage Murdoch. Hmm, Sonic Heroes, Naughty Interview. Hmm, spy Fiction, that's right, Mr. Pigeon. I've been the double agent all along. I, I don't get the, what Mr. Pigeon is. Uh, 100 bullets, psyops, 007, everything or nothing. Mm, annual award special, the year's best games, including our 2003 oh, game of the year, can be found in our annual feature starting on page 44. Go there now. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this page though. Uh, PSM's seventh annual award special. Hmm. We reviewed hundreds of games in 2003, but now it's time to crown the best of the best, the PSM 10. No true PS2 gamer should be caught without these games in their collection. Well, I guess we're going to see how many of these I have in my collection. Alright, number 10, Beyond Good and Evil. That is a good game. It's actually one of the first ones I grabbed in my collection. Uh, so I, I think they're, I hear they're going to make a sequel to it, but I've been hearing that for years. We'll see. Def Jam Vendetta. I would not have guessed that. I don't own that one. I'll keep an eye out for that. Final Fantasy X2. Ooh, that's a that's that might be a little controversial. 
NBA Street Volume 2. Um, I did recently uh, play one of the NBA Street games, and uh, it was a lot better than I thought it would gonna, was going to be, so I think that's a good pick. Midnight Club 2. Never played it. Special Achievement Awards. Best Graphics goes to Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. All right. Best Sound and Music goes to Castlevania, Lament of Innocence. Okay. Best Character Design. Jack 2. All right. I'm in. Best Art Design. Beyond Good and Evil. Oh, they're already on here. I went in twice. Most Innovative Game. iToy Play. Runner Up. Karaoke Revolution. I do like the iToy games. They're a lot of fun. One of them kind of doesn't make sense, but, but they're good times. Number five, Socom 2 U.S. Navy SEALs. That game was huge. I had a friend that had like the whole headset and everything. I actually have the, the headset for this. It's all busted up because it's, you know, from 2003 or whatever. But like all the, the little foam parts that go around the mouthpiece are crusty and have fallen off. But that was a huge game. Ratchet and Clank, Going Commando. I don't think I actually own that one. I think I have the one before it and after it, but not that one. If I recall correctly, maybe that's the last one. But I think that's the second one. Ah, uh, Virtual Fighter 4. You know, I never liked the Virtual Fighter games. Like, they always felt like they were just saying, like, look, we're a 3D fighting game, and then offered nothing else. But maybe that one's different. I don't know. I prefer games with a good combo system, and I don't, I've never played that one. SSX3. Man, people love the SSX games. I don't think I've played SSX3. Maybe I have. I think I have uh, SSX1 or 2. So let's see what number one is. Jack 2. Oh. Uh, I don't own Jack 2, I don't think. Maybe I do. I forget. I forget which Jack games I own. But, uh, oh yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that was a big one. I guess. Over, uh, over Sokum 2? I don't know about all that. Uh, or Beyond Good and Evil, it seems like should have ranked a little higher. But, you know, whatever. But whatever, we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, um, let's skip all this. Champions of Norath, Realms of EverQuest. Huge fan of this game. It's a couch co-op game. It's fantastic for couch co-op. Uh, it's a dungeon crawler like uh, Diablo. That's multiplayer, so you and your friends can just run around, hack and slash, and swap loot. Everybody's constantly like, like, yo, you got that wand, man. Give me that wand. Or, I guess, staff. Like, I, like I'm the magic user. Give me that staff. Like, oh, yeah, hold on. Wait till we're out of this battle, then I'll start passing you all the magic crap big fan of Champions of Norath, which is part of the EverQuest world, which I was also a big fan of back in the day. Hmm. Virtua Fighter. Questionable. Sega's RPG based on the series comes to PS2. It takes a turn for the weird. What? There's a... I, I don't know what this is. Hmm. The concept of a game that let Virtua Fighter fans take control of their favorite combatants not in a fighting area but on an epic RPG-like adventure exploring their backstories has been the stuff of Dream and Legends for years now. Then Sega dropped the bomb. The Virtua Fighter RPG, then called Virtua Fighter Quest, was being developed for Nintendo's GameCube. Now the game has been formally unveiled, it's officially headed to PS2, and is, to say the least, not a thing that anyone expected. Title, Virtua Fighter Cyber Generation. You know, I'm gonna have to look that up. I don't know, I don't recognize this. Ah, uh, does this, did this come out? A Virtua Quest did come out. I have not seen this one. Huh. Okay, so this game did come out, and it has a really low meta score. The, the Metacritic score is 53 on here, so that's probably why I've never heard of it. It looks like it was not well received, although some of the re user reviews are really high, but I mean, user reviews on Metacritic are generally ignorable. Let's see, IGN gave it a 66, and IGN's pretty reliable, so this game, I guess, is not that good. I don't know. Alright, uh, PSP stuff. I'm not really into that. Sony PS2 capabilities underused. Half of games barely push the system, developers told. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Sega's Road Rage. Sega has filed a lawsuit against EA, Fox, and developer Radical Games, alleging that the company's ripped off Crazy Taxi when creating The Simpsons Road Rage. Sega holds a patent on the gameplay concept for Crazy Taxi, and as every as anyone who's played the game knows, Road Rage bears more than a slight resemblance to Sega's title. Sega wants sales of the game to cease and is seeking unspecified damages. Well, I don't think they ever like pulled that game from the shelf. Good game, the The Simpsons game and Crazy Taxi for that matter. Rumors, alright. Outrun on PS2. Uh, 
PS3 built-in eye toy. Well, that didn't want to come out, although they did uh, kind of push some eye toy with the PS3 a little bit. PSP rumors, I don't know much about PSP. Konami sets eyes sets its eyes on ease. Uh, interesting. Yeah, they're still making the ease games, so hits and misses. Sony's developer bootcamp. It's no secret that programming games for PS2 isn't a cakewalk, and Sony's recent analysis of top games proves that it can be a cha change. Proves it can't change the PS2, but at least Sony is making an effort to help developers squeeze more out of the system by example. The PS3 development ramps up. Grand Theft Auto VC gets censored. Due to an outcry from Haitian American groups and prominent politicians, Rockstar has agreed to remove any reference to the Haitian gangs from future copies of Vice City. There was concern that instructing players to kill Haitian crime lords in the game would lead to real life hatred or violence towards American America's Haitians. Sammy Big on Arcades. Now that it controls a majority stake of Sega, Sammy has indicated that the company plans that the company should focus less on home games and more on profitable arcade games. We don't know about you, but when was the last time you went to or even saw an arcade? And this is 2003. I mean, that is, that has clearly been become true. Versus mode. Res versus Pez. Huh. Round one. Background. Res. Tasty shoe that looks like you're on pills. Pez. Tasty candy that looks like pills. And advantage, that's a draw. Uh, round two, features. Oh wait, that's background still. Uh, res includes a wristband that buzzes to the beat. Oh, I didn't know that. Advantage res, Pez, includes character head dispensers that puke out treats. Oh, that is not a, I didn't know that there was like a wristband for res. That's interesting. Round two, features. Res, shooting enemies, changing the game's music. Pez, dispensers don't actually shoot the candy. Rez, main character is a non-descript wireframe guy. Pez, dispensers are based on recognizable characters. Nope, got a little bit of a split there. Eventually, Rez did, no, which I mean, which makes sense. Some kill zone, some, uh, it looks like a Zone of Enders 2 thing. Same old story. Looks like they're not impressed with whatever happened there. That's all right. Deal of the year, buy this game, get this game free. Uh, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, and Home um, Clancy, Splinter Cell. Uh, I don't think I have either of those. Maybe I do. I should really play the Tom Clancy games. Those are kind of a big deal, but generally avoid the shooter stuff. Or at least the, the tactical shooter stuff. Let's see. Current releases. Games to watch. Spy Fiction. I don't know that one. Siren. I don't know that one. Star Wars Battlefront. That one's huge. Psy Girls. Don't know much about that one. Transformers Armada. Uh... I have one Transformers game. I don't know if I have that one. I don't know if that one came out. I don't recognize it. Uh, and that's the thing with 1,796 games. It's easy to forget some of these. Yeah, like, let's see. There's a game here called Lobo. I don't know that one. Gradius 5. I think that one's actually fairly valuable. It's kind of hard to find. Mm, Final Fantasy 11, on the other hand, is everywhere. That's the, uh, I actually have the, uh, box with the modem for that one. The big box version of that. All right. Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. This is an interesting game. Um, it's a it's kind of a dungeon crawler style, and it's just brutally difficult. Uh, an interesting game. Uh, hammer, dynamite, rocket launcher. Just a few few tools to help rebuild society. Welcome to the wasteland. Yeah, not a not a popular kind of Fallout spinoff, but it's not bad. It's it's pretty good. Besides being like outrageously difficult, I guess. I only played a little bit, but I enjoyed it. Cool stuff. A monitor. Hot in February. Our top DVD picks. Kill Bill. Yeah, that's a good one. Planet of the Apes. Eh. Oh, that's the original. Yeah, okay. Kill Bill. All right, that makes sense. Barbershop 2. All right, yeah. Uh, Readers Most Wanted. Metal Gear Solid 3. That makes sense. Kingdom Hearts 2. Definitely makes sense. Gran Turismo 4. Man, these racer people. I need to get out of here. Got here. Final Fantasy 11. The MMO. Resident Evil Outbreak, of course. Driver 3. Oh, no. This is before Driver 3 came out. That game... That game is awful. That game is super unfinished and bad and broken. And it exposed uh, who is getting paid off to give good reviews because everyone hates this game. But there were a few people that gave it really great reviews. So, Xenosaga 2. Yeah, I think that's actually the best in the series. If I, At least that's what I'm told from people who have played it. I have not played it. Star Ocean 3. I should play that one. I don't know. I always mean to play more role-playing games, but then I get bored. NFL Street. Mafia. I don't really know those two. Wrath Unleashed. 
Wow, that's good that you're not keeping it pent up there, dragon friends. I don't know this game. Um, be warned, this is not a mere battle of brawn. In this world, war must be waged with a wary hand. Journey from land to land, battle to battle as you deftly command your army of demons, centaurs, and dragons. That sounds cool, but I've never heard of it. I'm going to look that up real quick. Wrath Unleashed. Uh, PSM ended up rating this a 70. All in all, it has a Metacritic score of 64, so that's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. I might keep an eye out for that one. Ooh, reviews. Final Fantasy X2. PSM must buy silver. Hmm, let's see. Where's our little roundup box? There it is. Uh, they gave it a 9. Different. Very different. But strangely satisfying. All the same, not for everyone, but good for Final Fantasy fans and Yuna fetishists. And we know you're out there. They they are out there. I'm sure of that. So maybe I should give this one a shot again. I don't know. I just tried to play Final Fantasy XII uh, recently. Um, like, gosh, I got like 15, 20 hours in. It just wasn't feeling it. But this one does look better. Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne. Painfully ugly, but painfully beautiful. I give it an 8. It ain't pretty, but it's great. Film noir story, tense action, and excellent presentation um, brings a bring a smile to your face. That's a typo. Mm, uh, and excellent presentation bring a smile to your face. So maybe not. Max Payne will hurt you, but good. Okay, well that's good now. Nightshade, a Sega game. This is another one. I don't know this one. A cunning mind, a killer body. How do I not know so many of these games? Let's look that one up too. That one has a 68 on Metacritic, so not bad. Van Helsing, Hugh Jackman, Kate Beckinsale, Be Beckinsale? I don't know how to say her name. May 7, 2004. I'm sure that's for the movie, not for the game. And Sonic Heroes, the road to success is often filled with several bumps. What's great about Sonic the Hedgehog's first game on PS2 is that it heads more towards the series original gameplay roots dropping a lot of the filler storylines and other less important aspects it says too fast too soon oh look at this remember these stupid things the oh, the cd or dvd things where you're like oh yeah you can buy a bunch of them for cheap and then it's like in parentheses it's like but you have to subscribe for like fifty dollars a year for fifty dollars a month for a year or something I don't know. I remember people telling me that they would like sign up for these with like fake information just for like their cheap videos or CDs and then just like ignore everything else that got sent to them. Yeah, Columbia House. Man, that was a that was a racket. So, no, oh, they gave yeah, they gave Sonic Heroes a 7, so maybe this is one of the okay ones. I think I have this one. I like this how it stacks up. That's cool. They got a uh, Ratchet and Clank going commando as like a a game they gave a 10 to, they got Sonic here in the middle with a 9, then down at the bottom they have a Bianca with a 6. I don't actually know that one. Bionic Bi Bionicle, that's not Bianca. I thought that was an exclamation mark at the end, that's Bionicle. I don't know Bionicle. It sounds like a Lego game. Maximo vs. Army of Zen. Uh, I, I've, been, I've heard good things about that. Maximo vs. Army of Zen, a mighty action sequel of heroic proportions. They gave it a 9. I've heard good things about this game. I really should pick this one up. Uh, somebody was once telling me that the Maximo games are really good, and I have not tried them yet. And we have an ad for Winning 11-7. I don't own this game. Soccer games are generally pretty good. I should probably pick this one up. Uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. Um, Baldur's Gate's an interesting one. Uh, I, I thought... I remember one time I played this and I thought I was going to love it, and then I ended up kind of not. Like, uh, they gave it an 8, and I'm sure it's a it's a great game. I mean, Baldur's Gate is like a pretty big deal. Part of the Dungeons and Dragons world, if I recall correctly. Um, but yeah, I ended up not being as much into this one. I, I'm definitely more of a fan of the Champions of Norath games. Soul Calibur 2. I know there's some people that are super into Soul Calibur. I guess there's a bunch of cool lore in that one. Uh, I don't know. Not usually into fighting games though. EverQuest Online Adventures Frontiers. They gave it an 8. I wish I could still play this. Uh, I do have uh, some of the EverQuest games. I think maybe I have all of them. Um, but of course the PlayStation 2 online content. I think there's like maybe one game that still works. Maybe. Without like hacking at least. So this is definitely something that can't be played. But big fan of EverQuest. Huge fan of EverQuest. Big fan of that. Ah, Stealth Bombshell Alias. That's a... Oh, I think I have this one. Wait, what is up with that? Oh, that's a PC box. I was like, is that like a three-pack or something? 
It is not. That is the PC version of the game. I feel like they should have shown the uh, PlayStation 2 version and they add in this PlayStation 2 magazine. But yeah, whatever. Lowrider 6. It's okay. This is on the freaking cover. I. Alright. Well, I mean. I guess that's probably paid advertisement on the front, but. Okay. It's an original take on rhythm action games and a nice and a niche that deserves to be served, but it's a little too homely and a lot too shallow. Yeah, no. I think I maybe I have played that. I vaguely recall that. I don't know. King of Fighters, 2000 and 2001, a punch from the past. Uh, if this came out in 2003, that's kind of I guess it's probably like a port of the arcade games. The the naming system for these games is kind of confusing because I think the next one is like King of Fighters 2001, 2002 or something. So they both have 2001. I don't know, but it's confusing. Also, not super into fighting games. So. Moving on. Soak them too. Mm, it's some people in the jungle. It makes sense. Oh, look, there they are again. But now they're at the back of the. Oh, no, because you know you get to see what they see. Before you're like, oh, they're in the jungle. Nope. They're coming upon a city that's already busted up. Um, yeah, you guys are. You guys are late. That's like. Whatever happened here is done, I think. Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly. Oh, Fatal Frame games are kind of nuts. Uh, a Kodak moment from hell. Cause yeah, it's a game where you take pictures of ghosts to fight them. Spooky game. Uh, I'm not usually into the survival horror games, but Fatal Frame, that's good stuff. More Soakum 2. Baldur's Gate. Dark Alliance 2. I don't know if I have Dark Alliance 2. I don't have the first one. Over 40 new levels of addictive combat. Five new customizable heroes. Vicious monsters, unrivaled graphics, and explosive spells. You know, and I'm reading this when they're talking about that that PlayStation 5 demo that went up a uh, gosh it went up uh, about a week or two ago where they're saying that you can just like put pull in any assets from like movie quality assets and you don't have to worry about polygon count uh, Lupin the third treasure of the sorcerer king true fans might like it they gave it a five yeah I thought that this game was well reviewed I remember like looking for this game for a long time and I think I actually bought a copy that didn't have a manual just because I was sick of like because I really wanted to play it it, it does not hold up it's not a great game. It's kind of a, one of those like sneaking around games, but it's just not very good. Although I am a huge fan of Lupin the Third, so that's cool. Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. Sometimes he shouldn't come back. Also gave it a 5, a so-so. Don't own this one. Never played it. Uh, yeah, I mean, movie games are generally kind of like that. Mission Impossible, Operation Surma. I don't know what that is. I'm not familiar with this game, but... I gave it an 8, so that's good. I'll keep an eye out for that one. Huh. None of that was a thing. In Television Lives, I do own this one. This one's cool. It uh, plays a bunch of 80s music while you're like playing these old Intellivision games, and that's pretty cool. It's got a great soundtrack. And of course, an ad for the Loop in the Third game. Big fan of Loop in the Third, uh, the anime and the films, the television series and the film. Nyko I-Type. Look at that crazy controller. They gave it a bad score, but... Uh, I'm going to keep an eye out for that. Nyko Net Extender. Uh, I'm not going to keep an eye out for that. What is that? Uh, uh, wireless Internet Hub? Okay, yeah, that's a little bit uh, out of date. Gamefly and Gamerang. They gave it a 6. Are you lazy enough for this to be worthwhile? It's definitely convenient, but you have to really burn through the games to get your money's worth. And if the post office loses a game, you just bought it, which stinks. Yikes. Okay, yeah, they did not. I don't know if Game Rank still exists. Gamefly is still around, I'm pretty sure, but. Hmm. What's this? Uh, I'm not a soccer star, but I play one on TV. Oh, I get it, because it's a video game. Uh, yep, yeah, there it is, right there. iToy Play. That's cool. I like the iToy games. I thought it was going to be like a bad ad, and I turned the page and I'm like, okay, that's fun. I like her. She, got, she has good taste in games. Uh, scoreboard of old games. Let's see if there's anything that are particularly bad or particularly good. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a 5. Battlestar Galactica is a 5. Ooh, 3. Fugitive Hunter War on Terror. That's a 3. That's real bad. Well, there's a 4. Backyard Wrestling. Yikes. High scores. Uh, yeah, those are all obvious ones, I think. Oh, yeah, then we did the, we did the top score. What is this? This is how I streetball with the McDonald's hamburger? What? It's an ad for McDonald's. This is how I streetball. 
a blacktop, a rock, and blades. My crossover will leave you stupefied, and don't even question my hunger. I devour a quarter pounder with cheese and some fries, like I did your game. That, like, did, like even this guy's like, what are you doing? Like, they're playing basketball on rollerblades. What? Uh, these girls are laughing at him, and this guy's like, what are you doing, man? Like, we're playing. McDonald's is here. Like, you want a burger? You want a burger? You rollerblade bat? Yeah. PS2 top dog. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, Nah, Night Dogs Jason Rubin interview. Uh, what is this? NFL Street. I don't think I've played this. This is the Asphalt Arena. And that's true. Wait, where's that? Is that asphalt? That's asphalt. That might be cement. Okay. Resident Evil Outbreak. Everyone's gonna die working together while the Japanese version of the game supports the PS2 hard drive which allows for considerably faster load times the US version might not uh, yeah I don't think anything really used the hard drive except for uh, uh, Final Fantasy 11 on the US version in fact I, I'm, I have a hard drive I don't think I have the hard drive connected because like nothing uses it that still works I mean I mean I'm sure there's like hack stuff for it to play like emulators or you know like pirated games or whatever but I don't know Samurai Warriors there's so many of these games Star Wars Battlefront it's a fantastic game uh yeah back when I don't want to say back when it's like an electric arts game this is EA still at this point right yeah I think I'm pretty sure this is electric ar electronic arts Ah, uh, gosh, they're so weird now. It's time for some new heroes. Not those guys. These guys. Is that... That looks a little bit like De Niro. A little bit. James Bond, 007, everything or nothing. Those are good games. Maximos, I hear it's good. Haven't played it. Driver 3, oh my gosh. PsyOps, the Mind Gate Conspiracy. I just haven't played that one either. Driver 3, okay, yeah, there's a bunch of hype behind this game. It was, like, going to be Atari's big thing, and, uh, um, the Driver series kind of ended up becoming, a, another game series. I can't remember the name, but the, the next series did really well, too. But, yeah, Driver 3 was so bad, and, uh, with the PlayStation 2, when you got a broken game like Driver 3, you couldn't update it. You know, there was no, uh, download the update. I mean, I think the Xbox version actually got, like, patches, but you couldn't do that on the PlayStation version, so, uh, it was real bad. MX Unleashed. Uh, yeah. Lifeline. I don't know that one. Hmm. Hmm. Kiss your controller goodbye. Or kiss your controller goodbye question mark. Huh. Set aside, or cast aside your DualShock 2. That's what Konami wants you to do with this unique, to say the least, adventure game in which the main character is controlled entirely using your voice thanks to the USB headset and some advanced voice recognition technology. What? That sounds awful. Does that exist? I'm looking that one up too. Yeah, sure enough. That did come out and it does use a voice activation. How weird. I'll keep an eye out for that one too. I hate I don't I hate that idea a lot. I'm not a fan of voice controls. Major League Baseball 2005. Hmm. MVP Baseball 2004. Hmm. This is 2003. They're talking about the 2005 you know what? Whatever. Whatever. Spy fiction. We go undercover to get a closer look at the spy game. Gosh, this one's full of games I am not familiar with. I'm gonna look that one up too. See, this is also a sneak around, uh, I really call that a, an action stealth game. Got a 61 on Metacritic, so not great, but not horrible. The Gundam games, there's so many Gundam games on PS2. I, I'm so surprised they kept releasing those here, but I mean, they're there. Kind of hard to find, not particularly valuable though. Combat Elite, World of War II Paratroopers, Take Out History's Dark Alliance. Uh, 100 bullets, and that's a lot of lead. That is a lot of lead for 100 bullets. Also not familiar with those. That one looks kind of fun though. I like the, the graphics where it's kind of brighter. A lot of these first person shooters end up being just kind of brown, kind of like that. So that looks kind of nice, but you know. But who knows, I've never heard of it, so it must not have done that great. The Evolution of Speed. Uh, 
racing revolution. A racing evolution. Hmm. Uh, the Red Star. Set in an alternate Russia known as URRS, the Red Star is a futuristic action battle game that tells the story of Red Fleet sorceress uh, General Maya Antares and the search for her missing husband Marcus. Huh. How strange. ESPN game, Samurai Warriors, Max Payne 2 ad, top notch FHM, awesome, Game Informer, 5 stars, Game Spy. Rated M. PSM How To. Final Fantasy X2. Some guide stuff. Oh, yeah, okay. The guide stuff. Ah, I remember these little ads are like this, where like, they had like the. That was a pretty common thing. Ah, that's fun. Seems like that was kind of left over from the 90s. Do something with your life. Or not. Vadrock College. <laughs> wait, wait. Saw Cactuar. Catch a Cactuar. Always catch a Cactuar. EverQuest Online Adventures Frontiers. Leave the other noobs chasing rats with PSM's Beginner's Guide to Norath. Very cool. Giant centipedes. I used to I used to go hunt down spiderlings all the time using my ranger uh, to get the spiderling silks to resell at the uh, the plains of uh, knowledge. I think that's where it was. Where the yeah, the whole thing. I made a lot of money selling spiderling silks. <laughs> Some codes for Lord of the Rings, Spy Hunter 2, Manhunt, True Crime, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. I didn't know there were cheat codes for that. Pause game, hold all four shoulder buttons and enter codes. Uh, get 1,000 shiny objects with a square, circle, circle, square, square, circle, circle, square. Hmm. Uh, on that note, while we're here, one of the great things about the Tony Hawk games, if you look at the cheat codes, they always spell out stuff if you take the first letter. Like a, of like the different symbols that'll spell things like X X X ecstasy. Those are always kind of funny. Some game shark codes. Oh, there's some Tony Hawk codes. And Tot Hat Quarantine Part Four, the final chapter. That game's uh, pretty valuable, so not a lot of people bought it. That, you know, I bought the first Dot Hat game back when it was new. Not a fan, and I I've tried to go back, and I guess if you like play through the series, like. It's really difficult to get through the first game, but then somewhere around game two or three, it all kind of starts to come together and get really great. That's what I hear. I don't know if I have that kind of patience, but I would like to. And I, I actually have some of the graphic novels for Dot Hack, and um, I also have the action figure that came with Dot Hack GU, the first game. So there's some interesting stuff with this series. I probably should give it another shot. Letter of the month. I'm not going to read the letter of the month. Hmm, some more Sonic Heroes. Oh, only. Only at Sears, five dollars off. And back when Sears was still around, huh? They don't exist anymore, really. I mean, I think they still have a few, but I don't think they've completely gone away. But they're mostly gone. The one here in Austin went away. We definitely went and bought some pillows from them when they were shutting down. Mm -hmm. Asked the eight hundred pound gorilla. That's uh, the guy I was talking about at the beginning. Ooh, Tony Hawk's Underground. 10 out of 10. GMR. I have no idea what GMR is. Five out of five. Maxim Magazine. That's not even a video game magazine. So, yeah. Uh, one of the best games of the year, Game Spy. Uh, driving, climbing, building, running, skating will never be the same again. Okay, yeah, you know I mean, I guess. Now available, thugonline.com. I might go check that out. It's probably not there anymore. Smart Bomb, a date with the devil. We got a little comic strip. Buying a video game. Play the game that's right for you. Oh, this is the ESRB. It's good that the video game industry kind of started self-regulating with the ESRB. It sounded like they were getting real close to getting something like uh, the movie rating system, which is just a nightmare. So it's good that they uh, were able to get on that. Next month, Gran Turismo 4 and Onimusha 3. Hands on. They got the little write the caption thing, and then you got the winner for like this one. Is that got like a, yeah, it says, oh, of Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. Uh, Omaha, Nebraska is a nice place. Let's see, Air Force Delta Strike. The sky is no longer the limit. What? You're just flying in space now? Yeah, I mean, that's what it looks like. Well, that's cool. Keep an eye out for that one. Resident Evil Outbreak. Oh, that's the back cover. This is like a extra tear-offable extra cover. Mmm. Fear will be redefined. This is RAC. At first I thought that said, like, PAC. I was like, are they, like, 
making some crack about Pac-Man? I doubt there has ever been a better way to rack them up. GameSpy.com. Oh, look at that. They use the Hustler. There. Whatever. Whatever. Never heard of it. Goblin Commander. This game is everywhere. You know, I don't know if I've really played this. Do I have this game? I don't know. I think I'd probably just pass on it because, like, this is, like, one of the most common games out there. It seems like a million copies of this sold and then everybody immediately sold it to the game store and then nobody ever bought it again. I run into this game all the time. Game Pro Editor's Choice. What? Uh, Nintendo Power, EGM. Huh. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Maybe it's pretty good. It's an RTS. Huh. RTS is fine. Rated T. Blood and Violence. That's it. That's the whole magazine. Get out of here.